This is a keyboard, and most people who make games would say it's a pretty important tool for, you know, making games. And in this video, I'm going to make a game without using my keyboard at all. Okay, now that that's taken care of, you probably have a couple questions on how I'm going to be able to program anything if I don't have a keyboard to type on. And I have some clever and really inefficient workarounds to this, but telling you now would be ruining the fun. I will tell you my plans for the game though. So the main gist of it is that the player is a Halloween candy bag moving left to right at the bottom of the screen. And he gets controlled by the player's mouse moving back and forth. And this Halloween candy bag is trying to catch as many candies falling from the sky as it can. Oh, and it's Halloween time if you're watching this in the future. I didn't randomly just decide to make a Halloween game in the middle of spring, but that would be a good April Fool's joke. Oh, and one more thing, I'm giving myself till midnight to finish this game. And if I don't finish, I lose. And it's about 5.30 right now. So anyways, let's get going. Our journey starts with the first challenge, opening Unity Hub. That was easy. Okay, our next challenge is making the actual project. So we just click new project and then navigate to a spot where we want to put our folder and wait a minute, I can't rename my folder anything because I can't type. Oh well, it looks like this is just going to be called New Unity Project, sitting inside of New Folder. So the first thing we need for our actual game is the player. So I'll just right click, 2D Objects, Sprites, Square, and then rename it to, oh wait, yeah I can't do that. So it's going to stay being called Square. Oh, and if you think this is going to be a problem, just wait till I start programming. That's when the real fun begins. And speaking of programming, we need our player actually following our mouse. And in order to do that, we need programming. So let's go add component, new script, and well, I guess it's just gonna have to be called new behavior script with the British behavior, but I've accepted that. Okay, in case you've never programmed before or used Unity, what you're seeing now is auto-generated template code that Unity provides us. Usually when programming, it's really nice to have, but I mean, you could just type everything you see, but in this challenge, it's absolutely essential. And there's another thing pretty much vital to this challenge as well that you may have never even known you could do. So you know control C and control V? You can actually do those same things with the mouse. You just have to right click and go all the way down to copy and then left click and then right click, go all the way down to paste and then left click again. This is an insanely inefficient method that you should never ever 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 use unless you only have a mouse. So if you haven't put two and two together yet, what I'm gonna do to program is highlight a letter from the template document that Unity gave me, copy it, and then paste it in the spot that I need, and then letter by letter, I'm gonna program exactly what I want programmed. I hope that made sense. What you're watching now is a sped up version of me writing float pause using this copy and paste letter by letter method. I don't know why I'm doing this, because I really don't need it for the game, but I am. So as you can see, it's taking quite a while but there's a way we can speed this up a lot. And I'm talking about a method that's even more efficient than Control C and Control V. Can I get a drum roll please for the savior of this game and by association, my own sanity? Introducing mouse macros. So if you don't have a fancy mouse like me, this whole thing is gonna sound pretty wild, but you can get computer mice with extra buttons that you can program to do stuff. That's essentially what a macro is. My mouse is the Logitech G403 Hero, hashtag not sponsored. And it has two macros on the side, and I hooked them up to the two functions I use the most while coding, copy and paste. Even if you don't program, I strongly recommend getting a mouse like this and hooking up copy and paste to some macros, because it just makes your life so much easier. The amount of time I've probably saved using these macros instead of using Control c and Control v all my life has probably saved me 30 seconds. I don't really know what I'm going to do with these 30 seconds. Probably think of cringy jokes to put into this video. Oh, like this one. What did one ocean say to the other ocean? Nothing. It just waved. So anyways, by using these macros, I can program a lot faster. Still not fast, but faster. So once I finished writing transform.position. I needed to write an X. But throughout that whole document that Unity provided me, there was no X. Oh well, it looks like I can't go any further with this challenge, so I guess I'm just gonna give up. Rats, is what I'd say if I was a quitter. Because of my genius level IQ, I opened up Chrome and copy and pasted my way to bring up the entire alphabet. From there, I copied the X and pasted it into Visual Studio. So now, we have the whole entire alphabet at our disposal, and thus have pretty much replaced the need for our keyboard. And the rest of the programming for this new behavior script was pretty easy 
just a little time consuming. And the best part about it is it actually works. Okay, so this is pretty awesome, but there are no candies falling down from the sky for us to collect. So that's what's up next. First, we'll just make a circle and leave it as circle because I don't feel like spending five minutes trying to rename it. And next, we're just gonna add two components that Unity already provides us, Rigid Body 2D and Circle Collider. And these two components together will pretty much make our candy obey the laws of physics. And voila, now our candies can fall and actually collide with our bag. We do, however, need a tiny bit of programming just for when the candies collide with the player or when they fall off screen so they can get destroyed. So this script is gonna have to be called something different because otherwise Unity's gonna get confused. So instead of confusing Unity, I'm just gonna confuse myself and call it new behavior script but with two T's this time. And because I don't really have anything else to say right now, I'm smelling a mouse programming montage in three, two, one, go. So other than forgetting how the onCollision Enter 2D function worked, everything went really smoothly. And now we have our candies getting destroyed when they need to be. Now these candies need to spawn in automatically. To do this, we need a new behavior script, but with three T's this time, and then a new pulse pounding mouse programming montage. Coming at you now. Awesome. Every three seconds, a new candy falls from the sky. But there's no penalty if the player misses a candy. So what I think we should do is give the player 10 lives and take one life away each time the player misses a candy. And to display this, I'm gonna use a slider that Unity gives us in the UI menu. We will need to do a tiny bit more programming. So we need a new behavior script, but with four T's this time. And now another mouse program montage now. Epic. Now we have all the candy stuff working perfectly. There's just one thing though. Video games are supposed to be fun, and this one is incredibly boring. So to make it a little bit more interesting, I'm gonna add in, I guess, our bad guy for the game. Now, stop and think for a minute. What is the biggest danger on Halloween night? Is it cars on the road? No. Is it serial killers wearing silly masks? No. Is it razor blades in your candy? Of course it is. So that's what the bad guy of this game is gonna be. Razor blades in your candy. Making these candies was actually really straightforward. I just had to do pretty much the exact same thing I did for the regular candies, except make it so that you don't lose any lives when you miss them, and that you lose three lives if you accidentally catch one. And just like that, we are pretty much done with the actual gameplay part of this game. The game is looking a bit ugly though, and could use some actual sprites instead of just a bunch of squares and circles. So I opened up Inkscape and just started making some stuff. The keyboard isn't used all that much when making art for games, so this part was actually pretty normal. I made a total of six sprites. Two normal candies, two candies with razor blades, one pumpkin Halloween candy bag that mysteriously doesn't have a handle, and then one low effort background cemetery. Bringing them into Unity was a breeze, and hooking everything up couldn't have been easier. Now, our game is looking a lot nicer than it did before. And we're almost done. We just have a few more tweaks to make this game as fun as it can be. The first one is adding a little bit of spin and horizontal velocity to our candies, so they don't just fall straight down. This makes the game feel alive, for lack of a better word. Next up is some balance changes, because the game is actually pretty easy. I think it would make the game harder if the time in between candy spawns got shorter and shorter and shorter. The way I did this is that the time it takes the new candy to spawn is 95% of the time that it takes the previous candy to spawn. This means it starts off really easy, and it's pretty easy up until the 30 second mark where it gets a little bit harder, but around the one minute mark, this happens. Which I don't think is too fair for the player, so we're gonna change it. I kept the whole idea of having that exponential function but I just changed it to stop once the time in between candy spawns was 0.5 seconds. It eventually goes down to 0.16 seconds after a lot of candies have passed. And then I also changed the razor blades to show up 25% of the time instead of the old 50%. And right now, the actual game is pretty much done. We just need a game over scene and a main menu scene. Oh, and it's also 11.30, so I only have 30 more minutes to do all of this. The main menu script was nice and easy, with basically just the background sprite and a play button. Nothing fancy. The game over scene was pretty much the exact same thing, 
with just a game over title on the top of the screen. Unity was also being pretty wacky with this, and I couldn't put a space in between game over, because if I did, this happened. So instead, I left it as one word. And I'm not too fussed about it because it shows off just how scruffy making a game with only your mouse can be. I got all the menus hooked up too at 11.52 p.m. and successfully made a game in about six hours without my keyboard. Thank you so much for watching. Because you made it this far into the video, you obviously liked it at least a little. So please consider subscribing and turning on notifications so you'll never miss a fun game dev challenge like this one. And speaking of fun game dev challenges like this one, you gotta click right here because this video is exactly that. Thanks again, see you soon.